The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. Um, we host the show and we put the show on each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. here on 1057 The Fan. We welcome you to the show. And today we brought from Akers Financial Group, Alex Monk. Alex, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm ready, Brian. It's cold, it's crisp. You're dressed up like you're ready to go this Christmas season with your your first child. You got exciting things planned? Um, Yeah, just... No, not really. Just <laughs> stuff. I'm like trying to think. I mean, we put him on a pillow and took some pictures in front of the tree the other day, but you know, <laughs> business as usual. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, next Christmas might be a little bit better for you and your family. All right. So we welcome you to the show. And so as Christmas season starts, we got this music and these songs in our head and we thought we'd do a show based on that. that sound okay, Alex? Oh, I love Christmas music. All right. Which song we want to work on today? <sighs> well, if it's by Mariah, I'm in. <laughs> Oh, my. This is not by Mariah. I, we're going to call this show Five Gold Rings of Retirement Investing. Yes, we're going to stop and pause for five gold rings. Yeah, so gold, golden, that's the big debate today. It's like which one is the better lyrics, and you know, it's really just up to whoever you get. I think when you really sing well, which we are not singing anything, nope. five gold rings, and then we're doing of retirement investing, and particularly about interest rates. <laughs> I killed that word. All right, keep going with um, the idea of investing in this environment. So the show we put together is ideas and topics that you need to listen to about how you can make more money on your money, where your money's working harder for you, and understand these gold rings, these very important pieces of, the, of information that will be valuable to you and your family. Did you say did you say interest rates though? There is something called an interest rate. If you walk into a bank on the wall, they have an interest rate now. <laughs> it's a new thing. Some some of you don't remember this, but back in ancient days, they would put interest rates on their wall, on their signs, on their website. We pay interest on your money. Yeah, so and there's some people out there listening that they may bank at like, I don't know, a large bank that has like a three letter yeah, name. Sure. And they're like, I'm not getting anything yet. Absolutely. So there's this thing called a bank statement. On that bank statement, <laughs> once a month, they're supposed to enter something called interest. Now, we assumed that zero was normal. Zero is not normal. So one of the first golden rings is this. Look at your statement on your money that you have that you're trying to take zero risk with that have liquidity and see if we can make our money work hard for us, work harder, Wait. actually make money. Did you say that? We can get some return on the cash we have in the bank right now. All right, I'm not going to. Go too, I, I, I'm not going too crazy on the idea of of making great returns. Just making something on it while it's sitting there. Right. An example: someone has a million dollars in the bank at zero. What is their rate of return? What is the amount of money they make each year? Zero. Right. Nothing. If they get a simple one percent, all of a sudden they make how much? A thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand on one percent. Oh wow. If a million bucks, but then you'd have to have four beneficiaries to <laughs> avoid the FDIC limits and make sure you understand how to properly hold larger sums at one bank. So if we got like 4%. If we got 4% on FDIC, that'd be great. Wow. Now, over the last few months, interest rates on the shorter term have gone up while the long-term rates have not. The inverted yield curve. It sure is right now. Sort of telling us that rates might go up, but they also might come down in the future. And so the long-term rates are, are, in most cases, especially on the Treasury side, are looking um, are actually less than what they pay in a two-year. Rate. Right, and so that's kind of the short-term rates predicting some something going on in the future. So if that's that's in the news, right? Like that's right. one of the big things, like this time of year or right now, is hey, there might be trouble coming. Absolutely. And now we're going to try to, to focus the, the show on a concept. And that concept is five gold rings of retirement investing, understanding that all of your money needs to work for you. When we get it all to work for you, it's, it's bringing in money. Yes, you're going to have to pay tax. You have to do this thing called a 1099 interest and 1099 dividend. We haven't had to even ask for that for tax returns for a long time. <laughs> Banks just stop sending it because if it's under 10 bucks, they don't send you anything. But now they're paying real money again. If you're online, you got to go online and get your 1099 at the end of January next year because you actually might make interest. But the other important thing that you said is that all your money needs to be working for you. So I don't want people to hear that and, and think, well, all my money's in the stock market. 
right? Well, that's probably not the right answer either. It should not be. But the reality is this. Let's start on the on the risk curve all the way down and protect it and zero risk. Let's start with FDIC. The first gold ring is at your bank. And at your bank, we have our checking and our savings account. That checking and savings account should have a certain amount of money, um, but not too much. Right. What do you, what's your opinion on that? Um, so depending on the client, but I go with the three to six months emergency fund checking yep. just enough so that you don't bounce checks. And and know. if you can hit it, hit it at a level that the bank doesn't charge you a fee. Right. So knowing your bank, knowing the rules at the bank. Um, banking is, um, we used to all go to banks and drop things off. Now people are doing a lot of mobile banking. Um, the younger you are, you might know, not know where your bank is because you've never been to one. I use USAA and I have never been there ever. Right, and that's that's okay. That's okay with banking as long as you know how to work that system. Right. Now, for those that have actual banks and you go by, um, I don't think you have to get appointments anymore to go. Well, so I did have a client the other day that the banker called him and said, you know, our, our in-house wealth person would like to meet with you because you have XYZ in your account. And she says, well, I don't know if my financial advisor would be very happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the banks are out there. They're meeting with people. You meet sure. in there all the time. Right. So let's the simple part, FDIC. Now that is the federal government backing your assets in the bank. This happened after the 1930s and the 29 crash and the banking, the extreme banking crisis back then. Because without a federal bank guarantee with the insurance on the money, people were not putting money back into the banks at all during that time period. Yeah, that's a huge issue. So, you know, our banking money, we want it to be liquid, we want it to be safe, and Mm -hmm. we want it to be there for what we need it for. Now, the banks that are local and the banks that are online are tied through the National Bank. you got to make sure you're doing FDIC accounts. If a bank sells you anything else that's not, they're supposed to disclose that it's not FDIC insured. So be very careful on that kind of idea. And then you have, what, NCUA for your credit union? Sure, absolutely. So I had this one client come in, and they are talking about, oh, I was at my bank the other day, and uh, my emergency fund, they, they told me about a CD, and I get 3.8% on like a 30-month CD. And I said, oh, that's really good for a CD. Almost as good as a CD through a stock brokerage for account that we have. Right. And now the two-year the two year CD um, this week is around 4.75 yeah. for an FDIC CD through a brokerage house. Now, that hasn't happened in five, seven years. <laughs> I've, I was pulling it up, and I'm just like, you know, I don't know when the last time I've been in here was. <laughs> well, well, the idea is like, okay, if you're in zero, how long are you going to spend shopping for it? Nothing. Right. It's almost like when the interest rate was um, zero or 0.15, why would you drive to the bank to, um, to, to change the bank accounts? You'd basically leave things the same. Now what we're saying, the first gold ring is this. Hey, look at that gold ring and think about your money that's sitting there. Let's make it work harder. If you have 50000 in there... Uh, if you make 4%, that's a couple thousand bucks a year of extra money, which you, you were not making before. Right. And it's just like, why hold extra cash? If you know your plan, you know your budget, you know all these things. Like the stuff that we go over with clients all the time, you know, it's easy. It's like, okay, well, that's, this is what we need. All right. So that's the first gold ring is at your bank, how to effectively use that. The second gold ring, which has come a sort of a hotter thing um, in the last six months, is I-bonds. Oh. I-bonds are um, through treasurydirect.gov, G-O-V. It's an interesting website for you to check out on your own, to do on your own, to do direct through the federal government. Yeah, so they limit it ten grand per person, and then another five per person through their tax refund. If you do horrible tax planning, (laughs) you can luck out. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I I don't usually talk about that because I don't see how you get that, make that happen. But you can send your refund to an I bond. That's a possibility. Yeah, unless you did like a a late estimated payment just to overpay, so you get it's not worth it. But anyway, it's It's, tied to the rate of inflation. It's issued by the federal government. Um, and, and what's it at right now, Brian? Almost eight, seven point. It was eight point seven. I was going to call it up here while you talk about something yes, important. It's like <laughs> so. Let me get the I bond rate for this last next six months. And uh, so the way the way they work is you, you put them in and interest adjusts uh, based on the CPI. Six point eight nine is for November first, twenty two to April thirtieth. Uh, 2023. So every six months it adjusts. It locks in, right. So if you put money in now, that's what you get. It was 8.7 before. Uh, it's a combination of inflation and a base rate on the bond. That bond, if you read the information on the website, which you need to do, you'll see that you have to be there at least a year. Um, between one and five years, you would lose three months um, interest as a penalty if you get the money back out. So it's not highly liquid. It's not for all of your money. It's just another way of having part of your protected money um, set aside, backed by the U.S. federal government. 
I bonds or just like treasuries that are federal taxable, but state tax free, which is also an interesting thing. Yeah. So that helps a little bit, but you know, it, it, it's all about who you are. Does that make sense? Can you navigate the government's wonderful website? <laughs> right. And the website, you just go on there, look under savings bonds. And then under there is the I bond information. I think it's worth looking at for 10,000 per person. And then you can also go back in January and add a little bit more. That's about it that you can get there. Um, and that's a current a current idea that's paying the highest with the federal um, guarantee rate. That rate's only good for six months, and then the rate will change. If inflation does come back down to where maybe three or four, then that's all you would get. You wouldn't get higher than that. Right. But, you know, it's only 10 grand a person. So, so, so the second golden ring is, hey, why don't you check out I-bonds, right? Bank That bonds. could be a gold There's ring, a right? There's a thing going on here. I mean, I imagine, um, well, I guess 10,000 bucks. You make six six point eight nine. That's like... Six hundred ninety bucks, ten thousand. That's not bad. That's a win. Yeah, that's uh, enough to go out to eat twice. <laughs> it goes inflation. <laughs> well, the hard part with inflation is tough. Now we're talking about um, so far five gold and rings on retirement investing, but generally any kind of investing is tied to having some money in the bank. Yeah, or having something <laughs> that's you know going to earn. There's different ways to earn money, right? So you take risk. That's one way. Yeah, you take time. And, and that's usually associated with some type of interest. Absolutely. So you're not risking your principal, but you're risking your time. So you got to figure out, okay, what does that illiquidity risk look like for me? Yeah. Well, and so the, the show today, we're talking about five gold rings of retirement investing. And yes, Alex Monk and I are talking about these things. We're sort of singing in our head and we're stopping saying five gold rings. So we think about it. A gold ring is on your finger. It reminds you of something. A gold ring, when marriage, you're thinking about the love you have for your spouse, right? The never-ending, it's a circle. Gold ring, when it comes to ideas, is, well, what is a good idea? Well, some people tie strings on their finger to remember something. Think about this. The first two ones we covered this quarter, the first one was at the bank, you can get better interest. Why don't you take a look at it? Second thing is treasurydirect.gov. Why don't you check that out, see if that applies in your situation. Now, the best part of retirement, because this show is called Winning in Retirement, is getting your time back, where you decide how to use it. Before retirement, your time is tied up with other commitments, mainly your job. A lot of that goes away in your retirement years. Your time is now consumed by things that you want to do. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com, scroll to the Schedule and Meeting section, and let us know you'd like to schedule your free consultation with one of our team of advisors. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. So go to our website, acresfinancialgroup.com, or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. My true love said to me, rising interest rates can be a good thing. We'll talk about this in two minutes. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. Here with me today is Alex Monk. Alex and I both are certified financial planner practitioners. Uh, we work for Acres Financial Group, and we're under uh, our RIA as Arcadia's Wealth. We have been advisors for a long time, and we've been working with people and helping them get ready and stay retired. It's been a combination of all that. And so this show, what Alex and I have done is we've taken the music of Christmas in our head and <laughs> applied it to financial advice. So uh, forgive us if it's too dumb, but um, we thought it was okay. Yeah, if we get enough callers, I'll sing in the third quarter. I mean, who knows? <laughs> if you contact us, you can tell us to stop it or keep going. Uh, you could give them um, some advice on that. would be good. Uh, we do enjoy the, um, talking to the listeners and, and meeting them and talking about their situation and also hearing about their opinions on uh, what else we can talk about on the show. That's always fun. I do like it when someone calls me out for saying something, though. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I coach in basketball now, right? It's basketball season, so I'm at a game, and the, a referee goes, hey, I'll – Driving to the game and heard you on the radio today. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, what'd you think? And he starts, you know, oh, it's pretty good stuff. How I ought to do that. And I'm like, oh, really? It ought to do that. It can't be our answer when it comes to financial planning for you and your family. It's got to be this. If there's something important, as important as maybe a gold ring, that's what our show is going to be called today, Five Gold Rings of Retirement Investing. If something that, that's important, you'll remember it and actually do something about it. Right. That's the key reason to listen, learn, and then apply. Apply, all right? Because you can learn, like all these people, that they learn these things, they read these books, and then yeah. they never do anything. It's like para- 
paralysis by analysis, yeah. something like that. It's just starting is the biggest part. Absolutely. So the idea of five gold rings of retirement investing, we're talking about just the basics of where your money is. Is your money working as hard as you do? Maybe you don't work hard. Maybe your money doesn't work hard. <laughs> but honestly, most people work hard. And then you look at your money, especially the one that's been in the bank over the last five years, and you're like, hey, it doesn't make anything there. Now, you'd be amazed. They're posting interest rates up in banks now. They actually um, have a rate to pay, which is a, a good thing for short-term money. Yeah, congratulations, people that save money. You know, now your at day the, is back. At the bank, they're putting up CDs, certificates of deposit. Certificate of deposit, you put your money into the bank. It's FDIC insured, and you can buy a time period where they guarantee the interest rate for that time period. Some banks will give you a little caveat where they'll give you a bump up maybe in, in next year, depending on your age and, and the, the type of bank that you're working with. Yeah, some have like uh, higher rates for new money, yada, 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 whatever they're offering. Right. So some have, um, if you put money in checking, up to $25,000, they will be a higher rate. But now what they're doing as a way of enticing more money into banks because money was ex- exiting banks, what they're doing is offering CD rates. 18 months is a year and a half. They might be 30 months. They might be five years. And what they're doing is getting rates that are, are higher. Higher, what that means is like 3 to 4%. I think 3.8 was one I saw recently. Uh, and online might even be higher than that. CDs are certificates of deposit. They can be bought through a local bank or even through a stock brokerage firm like we have. Yep. Through our uh, National Financial Services, we're able to, to provide CDs. And the current rate this week for two years is like 4.75% which is nice to have some money that way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you you got to mix it up and take advantage of things while they are this way. And so this third gold ring is if you should have a CD, why and how do you shop it? And we want to talk about a concept of laddering your money when it comes to the low risk protected money. Yep. Laddering. What do you mean what do we mean by that, Alex? So laddering is just spreading things out for when they come <clears throat> due. So you don't want to say, "Oh, well that Three-year CD is the highest, so I need to put all my money in there. Right. Because what happens if, you know, you need a camper in 18 months or, you know, you need a new gold tooth or a new gold ring? I mean, you got to blow it up and then you pay interest penalties. So Correct. So you have to have liquidity money that's parked that you can get that at any day of the week without a penalty. CDs, you start to ladder them out. Like a ladder, you have a ladder up upside your house to put to hang lights. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> you, you don't do that. I'm a little scared of heights these days. But, but anyway. every rung is higher up. So imagine a rung might be six months, one year, eighteen months, two year, and then you think about well, if I have a certain amount of money that I want to stay zero risk, but I want access to in the future, you can buy different periods of time. Now CDs, this third gold ring we're talking about, is is an idea. We're, we're talking about the idea. We're not saying this is an investment long-term idea. It's for short-term money on money that's parked that's making better than, than it was. Right. Get your, you know, your money market emergency fund on an online bank at three. Then you're going to ladder out some CDs, look for a one-year, maybe an 18-month, two, three-year. Yeah. Or you could use a fixed annuity. You know, yeah. Anything that's going to pay. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, that's the fourth gold ring you're sliding in there. Oh. Uh, okay. I don't know. Don't be giving out these rings too early. Well, in my mind, CDs and MIGAs are fixed annuities, one and the same. They're the same, but different. They are different. And the the big difference is that a CD is through a bank or brokerage house bank, FDIC insured, backed by the federal government through the insurance. A MIGA, a multi-year guaranteed annuity, is backed by the assets of an insurance company, not the federal government. Just to verify, the federal government didn't have a lot of assets recently, right? I'm not sure. Well, I mean. Oh, you're talking the FDIC account. Yeah, the FDIC account, right. Yeah, 07 to 09 was a tough piece of time for them after the mortgage crisis, but it's come back a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> banks have different re- deposit requirements, but insurance companies have to have more than what they owe on sure. their balance sheets. Absolutely. And so this third ring of CD, I don't, I don't want to come across saying that, oh, a winning a retirement thinks you should have lots of CDs. I believe that they still are a CD and the word is constantly depreciating. A CD is not a long-term investment. It's a short-term holding place. If you try to invest long term, you're not even going to keep up with inflation. We talked about I bonds as a second gold ring. The I bond is tied to inflation at 6.89. If you're making 4% to 4.75 in a CD, you're losing to inflation and then they pay tax. <laughs> That's called losing your money. It's constantly depreciating in that fact. Right. So your purchasing power has gone down. Absolutely. And that's why it's not for long term money. 
Now, we also, if you've heard our show at all over the last um, four years, you've heard us talk um, bad about bond funds um, and target date funds because their version of low risk was to put money into bond funds, which are down 10 to 15 percent in 2022. (laughs) We were right. Well, we were right. And the problem is, is that the protected or low risk needs to be protected and low risk. And the laddering is the answer. And as you extend out, it, we ha- there's different things to buy and put in place that make sense. The, so the third gold ring was about CDs. The fourth gold ring is a, a, a multi-year guaranteed annuity, a fixed annuity. Yeah. So the only benefit there different than um, you know a CD is that some of that interest can be deferred. Sure. Whereas CDs, you're going to pay your tax every year. Now, there's some withdrawal rules, stuff like that on the insurance side. It's a little bit different. Sure. Also, your backing is a little bit different. But on that that ladder or that rung of, okay, we're locking money up for X, Y, Z time period. I want to make sure I have the liquidity elsewhere so I can take the time and get the best return. Right. And so a fixed annuity can be like three year and five year. Now that's sort of what we're looking at. We're not going beyond that time period. No. Now, a three-year fixed annuity, depending on the rating and how the company is, is in the range of what right now? I think it's like four, eight, four to five, you know, something like that. Now, a fixed annuity is really good for someone over 59 and a half, not as good for someone younger. And that is because if you put money into it, let's say you're 45 years old, you make the 4.85%. It goes tax deferred, but if you want that money out, you're going to pay a penalty on that money when you pull it out. Right. So you have to be 59 and a half because these are the annuity contracts were established under the retirement code of the IRS code. All right. So when in our retirement years, as we're getting there, I'm building some money that's protected that makes 4.85% or so. It's not a bad idea for some of the money because that money has no risk. So if you compare a bond side, like a bond fund that's actually losing in total return and having a yield in that three to four range and you can get money guaranteed, it's really not a bad option for right now in this time period of interest rates. Especially right now to not have a negative is a big win for most people. Right. So in the portfolios that we've designed for our clients, yes, we have stocks and the stocks are well balanced and we have all kinds of core and satellite, depending on the risk level of our clients. It's a pretty awesome, pretty great portfolios. But then we slide in the protected side and the numbers are just a lot, a lot better than taking the risk on both sides of your money. I mean, to lose 15 percent on what you thought was your safe money really puts you in a jam as an investor. Because then you're forced to sell something that's down. If that's your safe money, it's, it's just like a it's, terrible spot. Hey, yeah, you fall in that hole where you lose 10 to 15 percent overall, and all, all of a sudden you got to get all the way back up before you make a positive dollar again. And that could be a year to three years to get all the way back in a slow environment, especially on a bond fund structure. It could take you a lot longer than that. All right, so three year, three year fixed annuity is around 4.8 that we've seen, and then there's a five year where you can lock it in for five years. When you lock in a fixed annuity, you really only have access to the interest or possibly a 10% withdrawal, nothing more than that. It does grow tax deferred, which has some tax advantage versus CD tax every year. So depending on the situation, that tax deferral might fit for you. Inside of an IRA, um, a fixed annuity uh, doesn't change the taxation of the interest earned inside of an IRA. It's just when you pull it out, you pay tax anyway. Yeah, and you know, a lot of them, it's whoever has the best rate, right? You make sure they're a highly rated company, they have the assets, and then you look for the best rate. Absolutely. And the fifth gold ring is treasury bills, which we're talking about one to two year treasuries. I just want to hit that just a little bit here in the second quarter. So that that uh, short term yield curve we were talking about earlier, you know, that's the treasury bills, right? So yep. they are, you know, you can buy them at a treasury auction yep, on Thursdays through that same website I talked about earlier, treasurydirect.gov or through your local broker. Broker, Yeah. So, I mean, I've never done it from the treasury website. No. <laughs> well, we broker, can't really. So. The client has to do it themselves. Yeah. We, we buy it for them. They, they tell us, they send us money. We buy it. And then that money, we can pick whatever month we want through an auction when we want it to come due. And sort of, it's a good way to have some, some money instead of earning zero in the bank. We can earn say 4.2 to 4.4 4 4 to 5. I, I'd call it right now, depending yeah. on what, what you're buying. Mark. Right. Um, and, and it, they're a little bit, bit weird because if you buy them on the secondary market, like I had a client the other day, they're like, Alex, I thought we said this was, you know, about four yeah. yield to worse. This is 2.75 on the coupon. Yeah. Well, and that's when you buy them on the secondary market, you pay less for the bond, you get it back at the end. So you got to watch out because you can have some short-term gains there. Yeah, it's called yield of maturity. Uh, we're, we're talking this topic fast, but the key thing on treasuries is that it's federal taxable, not taxed in the state that you live in. 
So that's a tax advantage reason so that if a CD and a treasury bill had the same rate, the treasury gets you more in your pocket because the taxes are lower. So we're talking five gold rings of retirement investing. We've hit the five gold rings. Um, this show's flying through. Hopefully you're paying attention to some ideas here so you can make your money work harder um, for you. And the reason is, is because in retirement, we want the biggest worry of your day to be where you're going to drink your morning cup of coffee, where every day seems like a Saturday, free of stress. Your retirement income, investments, and interest investing are all taken care of by the team of advisors at Acres Financial Group. If this is the future you want, it's not too late. It's easy to begin winning in retirement. Meet with one of our team of advisors, a free meeting with you and your, and talk about your retirement now. You can give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Learn how to pay tax once and never again. We come back in the second half of Winning and Retirement. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. I'd so like to be an announcer. I welcome you back to Winning in Retirement, Brian Akers and Alex Monk of Akers Financial Group. We are both certified financial planner practitioners, and we work with clients developing their personal financial plan and then implementing that plan through investments and and other um, ideas from insurance to um, fixed investments. Today's show is a show that Alex and I have put together because of the Christmas music in our head. The show is called Five Gold Rings of Retirement Investing. I almost said gold rings. You almost said golden. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alex, what do you think? Five gold, five golden rings. I like gold. I think gold. All right, so the idea, when you tie things on your finger, it's supposed to be a memory. So think about five gold rings. The main idea of this thing in your head is you stop and say, five gold rings, right? Not going to sing, but you think about five. Okay, we talked about the bank. We talked about um, I-bonds, talked about CDs, fixed annuity, and treasure bill. Those are the five ideas for your, your really, truly, your no-risk money on what to do. And in a meeting, we sit down and talk with people, and we build a ladder of that. So we just want to make sure that – when we cover this idea that you have all this in your head. You don't want you laying an egg, right? Alex? I was so happy. I thought you were about to sing. I was getting ready to, <laughs> except for the uh, the six geese that were laying, if I actually um, Yeah, that's a tough one. Sing. Geese is a tough one to sing. Well, the five gold five gold rings, I won't say golden, but that's, that's, that's a tough part of the song, right? Yeah, so I mean, people are driving around and they're like, well, where am I at in my ladder? Yeah. Right, but where am I going to get the money from? Because these guys are talking about four point eight. Like, how do I get these guys this money? Well, it's like, well, we got to figure out where it all is. Yeah. So statements is a good way, place to start. Statements, and then you know, do you have a a goal in mind? Do you have a plan? Do you have goals for the medium, long term? You know, all these different things, and this all ties in. So we'll help you figure that out. I know that's what we do. And we have some clients. What they do is they call us and say, "I got some extra money. I'm going to send it to you. Can you pull it out of the account? We pull it to the brokerage, and we can buy into the ladder um, for them." Right. Right. Um, that's just an option. We um, we truly have not charged management fees on that kind of concept. We just charge a little fee, a little commission fee to handle the purchase of um, the short-term piece. Yeah, because if I charge you one on three years, then the math never makes sense. Oh, I've seen a few um, advisors where they're charging a fee on everything, even the cash management side. <laughs> so back when we were making zero, they're charging one plus, one percent, the two percent, um, all, even on cash management side, which is tough. Yikes. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So I know you're driving around. You might be shopping. You might be running the sports. You're just trying to get things ready. Uh, you got this song, 12 Days of Christmas. And you think, well, that song's like a ladder. Well, investment's like a ladder. You lay that money out with purpose to the future. That's the goal. Now, the golden rule of investing, which I, I'm going to just change people's mind on this, and that is we need to learn, <clears throat> learn to pay tax once and never again. Because if we invest in any way in that ladder, there's taxes waiting for when we make money. When you earn zero, your taxes are lower. You got no issues. Absolutely. I mean, you pay, make no money, you pay no tax. Um, the concept I like is you made money, you pay tax. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, so that's usually it signifies a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are lucky enough to have that problem, then you have to realize, well, okay, well, now I need to figure out how to pay less of that. And sometimes you have to pay less. And the way you pay less is sometimes you have to actually pay. And so there's the ideas of Roth contributions, Roth contributions personally or through your company, or Roth conversion. Very late here in the in the 2022 year, 
But Roth conversions can be a way to move some money. You pay tax now and never again. Yeah. And I spent a lot of this year doing that. I know you had two oh, yeah. clients. Like the market's down. Let, let's pay the tax now. Like, I, I like the stock. Let's hold it forever. Let's pay the tax. Oh, it sped up very quickly here in the fall because we were doing tax estimates of all the money that's been earned. And then we're, we're running it through and making the decisions to move and shift and make the, the conversion happen. And then last year, the 2021 tax year, there was a lot of capital gains. So people were like, yikes. And maybe their estimated payments went up. But this year, they're going to have much lower income. So you can do some tax loss harvesting, com- combine it with some Roth conversions. And it really, really turns out nicely if you project it out. Yeah, one of my newer clients, um, their 401k doesn't allow converting. You have to actually take an in-service withdrawal, roll the IRA money out, and then convert after it hits. And that was sort of a paperwork thing where we just handled it all for them. Um, but it was a, a concept of, oh, yeah, the next um, 2022 and the next three years, tax rates are very good. And with everything going on, it's going to skyrocket. So when we say the word that the federal government, treasury bills, and I-bonds are paying higher interest, where do you think that interest comes from? It comes from the federal budget. It comes from that debt portion. It comes from where they're going to have to raise tax to keep up with this, um, these bills, the higher interest. Yes, they they have a huge monthly. I can't imagine. Not, I guess you know, it's just it's insane. I don't know the math of as interest rates rise how it affects the national debt. I haven't haven't looked into that. And that's something that would be almost a whole nother show on the effects of the national debt and uh, the future taxation. So the idea of this, a pay tax now with a rate you know and never again is a big deal and something you got to consider when you're investing your money. All right, and here's the downside. You paid your taxes already. Yeah, it's done. Sorry. Like that's that's the risk. The hardest part is the opposite. Let's say you're retired and you're totally retired, but you only saved at work. You never could hide, hide money from yourself anywhere else. I mean, that was the only place that actually got money to build up and then you're, you're in retirement. You're like, oh, I need some money. And you call and you say, well, can I have a dollar? And that dollar goes, no, it's not your dollar. I'll give you 70 cents on that dollar because you had to pay tax. Yeah, so that's a big debt, right? I mean, they own a third of it. Yeah, it depends on where you're living and also depends on how much you take out each year and all the other income you have. But in retirement design, we want a tax-free bucket. Tax-free bucket can be a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k, a Roth retirement plan, a Roth um, conversion account, or it can be a life insurance. The cash value life insurance is another tax-free way of putting some money aside. Right, and that, that's a special one, too. I mean, tax the life insurance proceeds, is, it's always tax-free. It's such a beautiful thing. And I believe if you max out your retirement plan at work and you want to save more money, you got to consider cash value life insurance as the next option of saving money. Yeah, and then you become <laughs> essentially your own bank through retirement. It's fantastic, and it's back through, you know, it just needs properly designed and understand you need time in those kind of policies to make it work. Uh, if someone's um, presenting the idea to you, make sure you, you understand you need time. My opinion, it's 10 to 15 years. It's not a quick seven-year turnaround on the tax-free. It's a long time. It's yeah. a 20-year play. Yeah, 20 year it gets better and better. Um, I'm sorry, that topic we said very quickly. Let me try to explain it to you. Life insurance has cash value. Part of that cash value is almost like treat it like your house equity. Imagine that you have a house, the value went up, um, you can access the cash in there through loans. Yep. And and you can also, um, <laughs> but in a life insurance policy, you can withdraw what you put in, and you also take loans against your own policy, and you don't pay tax on it. So it's a lot like having your house. Right. And the only difference is, we, you don't know what your house is going to be worth in the future. But the insurance company knows two things, your death benefit amount, yep. and that you are going to die someday. Yeah. <laughs> so- it's a little bit more calculated, but it works out extremely nicely. It's something that um, I know I've done um, since I was 23 years old is having something like this as a way to save for my family's future because it gives a lot of great benefits when it comes to tax-free death benefit and tax-free income when it's needed. Whenever that day may come, it might be a big event in life. Um, I know Jeff that's on the show with us, you know, his big event was the adoption of two sons where we used the cash out of there for that big event. It was a, a pretty cool thing to see how that worked after – all that time you put money in. Yeah, and then it comes out tax-free and, and there's all different benefits for it. But like to your point, Brian, everyone's life has different goals. So you just got to make sure you got all your buckets filled. Yeah, so learning how to pay tax once and never again. So if you're in a, uh, let's say a CD and you make interest and then you make interest on that interest, every year you keep paying tax, no matter what it makes. If it's in a Roth IRA, the same CD, 
you make you make any interest, you don't pay tax on it. So as you let it grow, um, then you don't pay tax, and that just seems um, very logical to me that, that you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, as you're saying that, you're just like. It's like such a no brainer. You're laughing. You're like, you just, you don't pay tax. Well, I had this retired couple. They came in and they work part time jobs and they're like 70 years old. They make 14 or 15,000 this year. And I'm like, well, let's move 14 out of your bank into an IRA. And we don't need to take a lot of risk with it, but let's make it tax free. And that's called a Roth contribution. It's just a simple situation because they changed the law where there is no age limit on Roth contributions for if you have earned income. It's pretty neat. Yeah, and I have a bunch of clients where it's like every year they bring in their W-2 from their part-time job before yep. April 15th. And, you know, it's usually like a couple thousand bucks, four or five, whatever it is. But, hey, it's something. Slide it to a Roth. Yep. Now, the younger you are, we love Roth. We love converting Roth. Um, if, you, if you wanted general advice, pay tax now, never again. It's not a bad idea. So when you're talking about golden, golden rings, um, I guess, is that a turtle dove? Is that the um, four calling birds? Uh, where do we put this golden rule of... Of pay tax now and never again. I mean, it's like something that you know, drummers, you would want 12 drummers to talk about tax for. Oh, okay. I hear you. Like you would want to shout that. Well, it's it's a Christmas gift. It's one of those gifts where you get there in retirement and you get a check and like, hey, what's tax on that? Hey, nothing. You already paid it. I mean, I'd be swimming like a swan if that happened. I mean, or like a duck <laughs> paddling hard underneath. Swans are swimming. Swans are swimming. Oh, that's true. Which, <laughs> which one's that one? Seven. Seven. Seven swans are swimming. Yeah, don't test me on that. Um, I'm trying my hardest. Um, so today's show has been five gold rings of retirement investing. The first steps we were talking about is on that safe side, on the low risk to protect it. There's the FDIC through the banks. There's the treasury, um, the I bonds and treasury bills, which were golden ring two and golden ring five in our talk today. That was in our first couple of segments. If you miss anything, go to our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. Go to that website, hit the radio tab, and, and you can actually hear past shows, hear this show, and get to know us, and then call with that free meeting where you sit down with one of our advisors and apply your exact situation to your money. It's really important to understand that these things are all um, options that you have when you talk about your retirement years. You need, you need to understand that making the most with your money is, is one of the most important things that we have for you. Right, and the, the biggest thing I, I love to see when clients leave a meeting, Brian, is that, that peace of mind, especially after you know some stressful life event or whatever. It's just good to see because the money is a byproduct, it's a tool, right? Yeah. It's life that we're really here to Yeah, enjoy. it's like it's a version of life coaching, really, where you're, you're listening to where it's going on and you're talking about their exact situation. I, I, without planning, I don't know how people advise how to invest. I don't get it when someone sells a product without understanding the whole situation. They call that fiduciary now. I'm sure I've always called it planning. But planning is knowing what's, where you are in your life and then applying the answer to you. Very, very important. Yeah, I don't really think there's another way to invest. Or how, do you, how would you even know what you're doing? When you attach purpose to it, it works. And the reason I think that's so important, uh, it, it was so important that I set up this company to be an independent firm. Well, we don't report to a big company on Wall Street. We report to you, the client. We do have offices in Lutherville and Varsitil, um, clients all around the country, actually, and even a few around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. You can give us a call for a free consultation with one of our team of advisors. Call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. What you know for sure might actually not be true. We'll talk about this in two minutes as we start the final quarter of Winning and Retirement. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Welcome to the fourth quarter of Winning in Retirement. I'm the host, Brian Akers, the founder and president of Akers Financial Group. Um, today I have Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, um, one of the leaders of our investment committee, uh, certified financial planner practitioner, which is a, an incredible thing because of the education and the way you apply it as you work. Uh, and that guy is Alex Monk. Welcome to the fourth quarter, Alex. This is the time, man. This is where we're at in the year. So we're at in the show. It's a big day. Yeah, December is all about winning the game, closing out the fourth quarter, winning the championships, especially when it comes to football. It's all about basically who has the ball last and who finishes the, <laughs> who finishes it. Right? Like who has more points at the end of the game. <laughs> 
Oh, that's how they figured that out? <laughs> yeah. Well, the idea of winning in retirement is knowing, understanding what's going on. The hardest part is most people want to retire once, so they're not going to get experience in it and come back and talk to themselves about, okay, do this differently. And that's when you need to talk to someone who's done it before with many, many people and help people retire and stay retired. Um, this happened to me doing it since uh, early 90s, so it's a 35 years for me when it comes to the very beginning. <laughs> Don't say it that way. Man, right. you're getting up there. Yeah, 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 I understand. Yeah. All right, so I've been reading. Um, uh, Mark Twain and I were friends back in the day, and there's a quote from him I wanted to read, and that says, What gets us into trouble is not what we don't know. It's what we know for sure that it just ain't so. I'm not sure I didn't say it quite right as Mark Twain would, but the yeah. idea it's um, what gets us into trouble isn't what we don't know. It's what we think is absolutely true, and then you find out, oh, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah, it's like measure twice, cut once. Yeah, it's a good idea for uh, any type of construction job. Something like that. But, you know, have your ducks in a row. Absolutely. There, you triangulate your facts. And today, I mean, you, you can get information anywhere you want. Absolutely. And then you got to figure out, oh, well, does that apply to me? It's almost like going to the website to get your medical advice rather than the doctor. And you try to understand, well, well how does this apply? Right. And putting your rash against the screen, it's like, ah, it's, yeah. it's not matching up. Yeah, so the idea is this. Um, when you when we're doing this show and putting it together, we did the five gold um, gold rings of retirement investing. We talked about those. Then we talked about the golden rule of tax, uh, basically pay tax now and never again. And then we want to finish up with the, the major partridge in the pear tree, right? The main oh, um, planner great. in the wealth tree is the option. Planner in the wealth tree. And the idea is this. I believe the big finish is you need an advisor, a coach, a planner for you that's in your retirement tree of experts. And because of the following type statements, the first one is this. Let me ask these to you one at a time, Alex. We know something is high risk, but we go ahead and do it anyway. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> All the time. Oh, and people think, oh, yeah, I can make up everything just by... Uh, rolling with it, you know? Well, and, and so it's delivered to me in a couple of ways. Like they, they know they're taking risk and it's working out. So they're like, yeah, so I did this this way. Mm -hmm. Well, then on the other side, they're like, well, I didn't know anything else but yeah. to take this much risk. <laughs> Absolutely. So the, the first question was this. We know something is high risk, but we do it anyway. This is where people take a lot more risk than they need to to reach their goals. And the, the problem is, is when people are so close to reaching their ultimate goal, then they take extraordinary risk and all of a sudden one bad year sets them back five years. At least, right? So, the, and <laughs> we've seen it before. People get greedy at the top. It's terrible. Absolutely. Now, the next one is people don't hire a financial advisor because they actually cost money. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. They go like, oh, I don't want to pay for an advisor. Okay, fine. Good luck. Well, the hard part, an advisor is worth their pay. They need to add value when they work with you. And that's the, the concept. That's the idea behind it, right? right? And I always show people, you know, if I'm not delivering, fire me. Yeah. I want you to. Because then you know, I'm not serving a purpose. But we have to be able to add value above and beyond whatever fees we charge. And I think we do. I mean, just Absolutely. on the tax advice alone. Absolutely. The, co the goal here is this. People are saying they don't hire a financial advisor because it costs money and they think, oh, that's going to pull back. The idea is that if you imagine that if you had an advisor, had a coach, where would you become? Would you be that person who wished they, they made it to the major leagues or be in the major leagues? Um, that's a, a difference when it comes to it. The next comment is this. Um, people listen to a friend on their finances, but but they never told the friend their actual financial history. <laughs> so, the, you know, the friends, um, a lot of friends have all kinds of advice. Yeah. Well, I mean, what a, there's always that one guy at the party, usually it's a leather hat on or whatever, who's telling <laughs> yeah. you about the stocks that he bought or, you know, his yeah. investing groups reel into yeah, solar right. energy. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't apply to everyone. But like some people start out a meeting going, oh, my friend said, or I heard that, or, or clients might say, oh, I, I heard that I shouldn't have an advisor. I should just go do it on my own. And my answer to them is, are you sure you want to do that? And the idea is this, I'll do, does an advisor add value? And then if you think about like, if I have a client and we're having a talk like this, it might be, well, what, what has happened over the last decade? At what, where the, where's the value been added? And they go, all right, I, I think of, I've never thought about all those things that are being done for financial planning, not just the one thing, right? Right, they, and, yeah. <laughs> now, one of the common things that everyone does at work is they defer tax to pay less now without thinking about their future. This is almost like the CPA concept of, of 
doing your tax return. Let's pay the least amount of tax now and then worry about the future later. And I've gotten arguments with the CPAs before. Like, why are you converting to Roth? They're 70 years old. Like, because well, I never want to pay tax again. Yeah. And I want to do it this year because this, this, and this. But, you know, they are always looking at just what's in front of them that year. But there's more to the tax planning than that. Way more. Yeah, what used to happen is people would say, oh, on April 12th, I got to do an IRA to get my taxes down. And I'm like, well, do you really need to do an IRA? Why don't we do a Roth with that little bit? It's not going to help you taxes, but you get some more money saved uh, for that tax-free to future. Think of big picture when it comes to your taxes. Don't get um, suckered into the, oh, I got to pay a little bit less this year. We're in great tax rates right now. Take advantage of it. All right, the next thing is this. We don't want to buy stocks because they're down. <laughs> yeah. What, what's your comment back on that one, huh? You want to wait till they're more expensive? Yeah, I think so. I think <laughs> that's the, the, the comment is really is, oh, stocks are down. I want to buy it. And like, uh, when do you want to buy it? It's like, what? <laughs> just saying it out loud, like even seeing it written down is just like, I don't, I don't understand. What an advisor does is talks you out of that pear tree, talks you out of that place where you might be nervous or scared to buy the things that you need for your long term to do the things that you may not know of or, or be ready for, but to make sure you do all the things you need to do. It's almost like having someone help you with working out. You don't want to wake up in the morning, but if you're paying someone and you got to show up, I'm probably going to show up and they'll, you'll feel better after it, I think. <laughs> I, I don't get the working out analogy because that's not my thing. But uh, <laughs> uh. Oh my. Let me, Let's move right past that one. All right, the next one is we only invest in one thing we are most comfortable with that you see a lot of people with real estate or money in the bank where that's all they've ever done and they've done nothing else in investing or in any other way. Well, that's what my parents did and it was fine. You know, so that's the same story here, right? It's, yeah. It's, you, you know what you know really well. But like Twain said, what if that's not Yeah. <laughs> great? Yeah, so the quote that you're bringing up is, what gets us into trouble is not what we don't know, is what we know for sure that just isn't so. Yeah, and, and so the idea of what worked 40 years ago is probably not going to work now. Yeah, and, and you get these weird things about money and from whatever, your life events, you know, your family, all these different things. So you may think that this is 100% factually true. Yeah. And it's just not the case. So, and, and trying to get the emotion and the psychology out of money is really a planner's huge job is to get people out of their own ways. So the idea, an event happens in your life, you call the advisor up and say, hey, I got a question for you, before you do something. That's the idea of that advisor, to play that role for you. So let me bring up this next one. Um, the person says, we don't think about the tax effect, we just buy and sell things, then we just deal with the taxes afterward. Uh, yeah, that's not my thing. I, I can't do that. How, how, what if they come after your money? What if you have to pay... 5% more than you ever thought you'd have to, or 10% or 30% or it's one of those things You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what tax you owe unless you look at it and figure out your tax estimate and run tax effects of what's going on. Many times a uh, stockbroker accounts, they're buying and selling, trading, computer trading, and you hit November, December, and you don't even know where they're at. Um, we think you ought to take a look and see if there is some tax harvesting. And what is tax harvesting, Alex? So that's going through and checking what your gains are for the year and finding any tax losses that you can use to either offset them or lock in a gain or lock in a loss. All right. So if you have a loss, you need to wait how many days before you can even buy something like that again? Um, this is not tax advice, but 31 days. Okay. <laughs> well, so <laughs> the idea is if you have a stock that's down, if you sell it, you need to wait 31 days to buy it back. You can't just sell and buy it back the next day. Yeah, so, and the wash sale rules, this is a wash sale, they're all over the place on identical type securities. So it, yeah, the simple thing to remember is that if you sell for a loss, don't buy it back right after, just say, oh, I booked my loss, I put my loss in, <laughs> yeah, it, it, wipe, it wipes out, actually. <laughs> you get your 1099 and you're like, uh-oh. I lost my loss, I lost it. Yeah. I lost my loss. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a real tough one. Now, the final little question I have in this segment is, we make quick decisions without planning. So people... Um, don't really think they just decide and just do it. Yeah, it's I mean, those calls where you, you it's like, hey, Alex, uh, we just bought a third house. Um, yeah. We're going to need some money by the end of the week, right? <laughs> or uh, my son wants to buy a house, and I promised him fifty thousand. <laughs> or you know, like, well, that's above the gifting limit. You know, like some certain things that we get these calls about, where you just got to be prepared to handle it and try to work them through the right answer. And, and the clients, some some people are impulsive. Like, I get it. It, those things happen, but if we can at least try to change that habit a little bit, 
some of these big decisions that people make so quickly, even like expensive cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the idea is this. You need to know what you know and you know what you don't know so that you have an advisor to come in and help you know the things you don't know. Advisors that specialize in retirement planning is some people that you need to work with. So in the whole concept of this song, 12 Days of Christmas, what you got to think about is that, well, I'm sorry, I was getting ready to say that planner in the retirement tree. Yeah, can you imagine like little ornaments of my bald head hanging on clients' Christmas trees? Uh, is that like a new thing? Uh, uh, you have that stamp. I don't think we should go any further than that. <laughs> but so today's show has been five gold rings of retirement investing. So the idea is understanding some golden rings, things that, that can help make you money. Those five were us talking about the bank, the CDs, the, the treasury bills, the talking about I-bonds, talking about fixed index, fixed um, interest annuities. Um, those were five gold rings. And we're talking about gold and rule, pay tax now, never again. And finished up with the idea of the big finish in the song is uh, the partridge in a pear tree or the planner in your retirement tree. Thanks again for a good show, Mr. Alex Monk. I appreciate it. And we want to thank you for listening to our show today. We want you to win in your retirement by taking the opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule your free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go right to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule your free meeting. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. This is 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule a free in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Akers Financial Group offers securities through Arcadios Capital, an SIPC and FINRA member firm. Advisory services are provided through Arcadios Wealth. Akers Financial Group and Arcadios do not share any common ownership. Neither Arcadios nor Akers Financial Group provides tax or legal advice. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature, and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, and or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment. Examples and scenarios shared are meant to be for illustrative purposes only. Past performance is not indicative of future results.